Yeah, we're installing the 509 clutch plates, steel plates, and brass plates. Very important thing with these steel plates, before you install them, make sure you put them together, stack them together, and you're looking between the lines and make sure that it's not a gap in between them, like so. Because it'll call it like if the plate's dished, it will cause a false engagement on your clutch pack. So you want to make sure all your plates are straight, no gaps in it, they're not whopped. Do the same thing with your steel. Take a look at them. All those are good. Brass looks good. There's no dents in them. Your teeth are all there. Brass looks good. I'm going go on over to this gear. In this particular unit, the 509, you start with a brass and you're going to end with a steel. But remember on your steel plates, whatever way you have them laying, you do not flip them when you put them in there. You always keep them the same direction. You never flip your plates and get them backwards in there. Seven brass and seven steel. So you're gonna start with a brass and end with a steel. It's reverse. A secondary, which is known as reverse. Again, stack your plates, make sure there's no gaps in them. Start with a brass. Steel, brass, and steel. You do this until you run out of plates. This side is the primary or forward. End with the steel. Start with the brass and end with the steel. That's on these 509s. Any other gear, 514s, and other gears of that model, you start with a brass and end with a brass. Installing the output retainer, we have done install the seals and pre packed the seals with grease. We're going to be doing the shimming, checking the shimming and make sure the bearings are in play of what factory specs call for. And that's anywhere between two to five thousandths. Check the shimmer. I usually just put in four bolts just to keep the retainer down. Whenever you want to try to shim these barons, you always want to take your little rubber mall, put your plate on top of there. You want to Hit it a couple times and make sure those bearings and the races 
or seat it down completely. Three thousands as falls in between twin disc range. like to air check our cylinders, our pistons. See if they're and right here. This one's working properly. One of the ways I was taught to make sure your holes, your port holes are lining up on your secondary side. You look for these two little jet, these little ports right here. You look for your pump pin going across. You match them up, line it up real good. Make sure they're straight and even. Primary, take these two holes and you line it up with not the threaded holes, the port holes. One rule about putting these transmissions together is you put them together, you spin them. Right here we're going to install the bar top of the primary shaft. On these two bolts, if you look real close, there's a hole through it. And whenever you tighten them down, you run a little wire through there. There's, uh, you run a keeper wire through it. We 
And now what we're doing is pushing the bearing more into the shaft. Feed it through that one. Bolts that line up on me the way I want it. I call it a keeper wire for in case these bolts come undone, they won't spin out because the wires are holding them together. Yeah. Okay, you don't really need it to, to, to this, you don't really have to take off the seal carrier or the seal or anything on the back. So let's just play like the thing was in a boat. Yeah. Okay, your front seal you can't take off. Okay, so assuming it's not leaking and everything else, yeah. if it is, then you, you should be pulling the gear out of the boat. Yeah. The, the control ring's in there like that after he puts the, the piston pack assemblies down like that. Now, a 509 is a little more complicated. The piston assembly is more complicated than a 514. Mm -hmm. The C is more complicated than the B, okay? But the springs on, on a 514 are in the cylinder, the clutch cylinder, spiders right here like that. They're in there. The, remember the ones I was showing you all around and the height had to be right like that? That's, that's the what pushes the piston back and forth like this. It's the same thing right there. Okay, but the pit, the, the springs are inside that piston pack. That's an assembly. You saw him put it on, I guess. Okay, this this one right here. That part. That was yeah. it. Yeah, when you're installing your manifold, you want to make sure you put a little grease on your piston rings. Put a little put a little grease on the inside of here, so where it slides down into your pistons. Well, flip it over. Set it down Set it down gently. Then he just. Easy paint. This is a this is a, a little rubber lovey lovey cap. Lovey caps. And you always towel pins. go to your towel pins. And see how it's not straight when you do that. How do you know the piston ring is not getting locked in there like that? But the good news is, as soon as he fires up and spins it up, the pins come up. Yeah. We'll
tight, which is a good sign. Take a little rub them off. Give it a few love taps. This is the lathe O-ring. Goes into the output. So, uh, oil flow from the splines. Sort of lined up in there. Put Teflon. I like to use liquid Teflon. Uh oh, you gotta turn. Yeah, I gotta turn.